there's something about putting succulents together in arrangements and gardens. It's as if they're made for this. The many colours and shapes make them the perfect plants. I absolutely love making these and sell them along with other plants I grow at the local markets. Different pots serve different purpose. Some are made for outdoors, some indoors and others as an alternative to a bunch of flowers that can be transplanted into the garden once they grow too much. I often get asked if some sort of companion planting exists for putting succulents together. For those of you who may not be familiar with the concept, companion planting is a way of growing where the plants in close proximity to each other somehow help the other grow. This may be by deterring pests, attracting beneficial insects, fixing nitrogen into soil or simply by providing shade. Companion planting is mostly used in fruit and vegetable gardening, but when it comes to succulents, this method does not really apply as much. However, when planting succulents together, certain rules should be followed. Also, there are ways to use different succulents as companion plants to each other in some scenarios. When planting different succulents together, whether it be in pots or garden, certain things should be considered. The most important, in my opinion, is light. Some succulents prefer sun, while others grow best in bright shade. Most succulents need exposure to direct sun to maintain shape and color. These succulents will also almost certainly die indoors. The good news is that if you're making an arrangement for a sunny spot outdoors or planting out a garden bed, you have loads of choice. Pretty much all of the best and colorful succulents prefer living outdoors in the sun. If you're planning on making an arrangement for indoors, shade tolerant succulents are the way to go. The choice is a bit limited, but I think you can still put together some cute pots. I have a video on best indoor succulents, which I'll tag at the end. Another thing to consider, especially when putting different succulents together in smaller pots, is size. Many succulents simply grow too big and may struggle in small pots. If you put them together with small growing plants, they may completely push them out and eventually cause their death as their roots will take over the whole pot, leaving no extra space. The roots of these succulents are usually much thicker and stronger as well. Many smaller plants such as Echeveria grow thinner, more fragile roots. Because of this, they may not be suitable for each other. Putting super fast growing succulents like this Aptenia cordifolia in with others is also not great as they can smother smaller plants and completely kill them. And lastly, considering watering needs can also help succulents grow better when they are planted together. While there are exceptions to this rule, in general, succulents with thicker leaves and stems don't need to be watered as often as succulents with thin ones. Succulents such as these sedum plants can dry out pretty fast in summer, especially if they're planted in full sun or in terracotta pots. They'll require a lot more watering than, say, Echeveria or Graptopetalum. And if they're planted with succulents that particularly dislike too much water, the excess watering can cause rot in those plants. Companion plants are usually planted together so one can benefit from the presence of the other. In my experience, succulents can be companion planted in two ways. First, certain succulents are extremely attractive to pests and so they can be used as bait or trap plants. One of these plants that I personally use in the nursery is Orostachis iwarenge, which is irresistible to aphids more than any other succulent around. In spring, I put whole trays of Orostachis around my other succulents, so all the aphids go to those particular trays. When I see first signs of aphids, I treat the tray with pyrethrum spray. Aphids breed and spread incredibly fast, and so they do have to be disposed of once there's a few of them. Although aphids tend to stay on the Orostaphis instead of migrating to other plants, there's always a chance they will stray and I also do not want them to breed too much. 
So if you ever want to try this, do make sure to control the numbers on the trap plants. Another example is Echeveria albicans. My albicans brings all the slugs to the yard. And the slugs prefer it to any other succulent around. Without fail, every slug season the albicans gets absolutely decimated. However, the upside is usually the succulents around it are left alone. I can't guarantee the slugs never having a go at the neighbors, but so far, whenever I leave just one albicans in a tray, the slugs choose to have it for dinner. The second way succulents can be companion planted is to do with flowers. Certain succulent flowers attract a lot of beneficial insects that will eat the mealybugs and aphids. Some of the flowers that are particularly good are Aeonium, Senecio, Crusula and Sedum flowers. These can attract good insects such as the hoverfly, lady beetle or the lace wings. These bugs or their larvae are great natural predators and will eat aphids and all mealybugs. And that is it for today. If you'd like to add something or ask, you can leave a comment below. To learn more about succulents, subscribe to our channel or visit succulentgrowingtips.com. Thank you very much for watching.